So last week on the program, we talked about this rivalry that's currently brewing between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, specifically when it comes to the issue of health care. And according to a Washington Post article, Biden's team reportedly told Bernie Sanders team to, quote, bring it on when it comes to this health care debate, which I think is foolish because health care is arguably Bernie Sanders greatest strength. But nonetheless, they think that their guy, Joe Biden, can best Bernie here. Now, to give you an update, fast forward a week later, how is this going? How is this debate playing out? Is Joe Biden really communicating a more clear vision for the future of America when it comes to health care? Well, expectedly, no. He has completely and utterly face planted because at a rally in Iowa, he had the chance to articulate his vision for health care reform in America. And here's how that went. According to Mark Caputo of Politico, Joe Biden has a health care plan, but doesn't, quote, have the time to completely lay out all the details. Yet there's time for relatively lengthy anecdotes about how his dad long ago was unable to secure a loan to help send him to a school he wanted to attend and time to describe a New Yorker cartoon that hung in his office or to praise President Obama to remember the untimely death of his beloved son, Bo, and a crowd favorite to bash Donald Trump. In other words, if it comes to platitudes and personal stories, Joe Biden has all the time in the world to talk about that. But when it comes to health care policy, a policy that is the number one issue for a large portion of Americans, he doesn't have time to talk about that. So what was the point of you challenging Bernie Sanders? Why did your team essentially instigate this debate and this rivalry if you don't even have time to lay out an alternative vision to Bernie Sanders because we all know Bernie wants Medicare for all and you clearly disagree with that so what's your vision he doesn't have time politics is about policy but he doesn't want to talk about the one thing that a presidential candidate theoretically should want to talk about and to be clear it's not just healthcare where joe biden is completely empty and vacuous because he also has a proposal for college debt but no specifics on that either because quote i don't have time i don't want to keep you standing any longer he said this to a crowd of people in iowa the former vice president's ideas on climate change and foreign policy also a work in progress so he didn't choose to run because he has this policy agenda that he wants to implement to help americans he's running because to him politics isn't about policy it's about personality and persona and him challenging bernie just contributes to this narrative this character that he's building this straight talking no nonsense tough guy who will put anyone in their place because he's just so tough but i mean in actuality he's someone who doesn't care about policy is completely devoid of substance and People like him, presumably because he just gives people the feels. That's it. He talks nicely, he talks about platitudes, and he makes people remember the time when American politics was a lot more stable during the Obama years. And to support Joe Biden, you tacitly have to admit, or even explicitly in some cases, that you actually don't give a damn about policy. And the reason why he has so much street cred, the reason why he's so arrogant and wants to challenge Bernie when it comes to healthcare, even if he doesn't even want to talk about healthcare, is because he has elites. He has cable news pundits and celebrities backing him up. For example, watch this interview with Alyssa Milano on MSNBC. She literally admits that it's not about policy, that policy isn't why she's supporting Joe Biden over everyone else in the field. You have, what, 20 plus candidates now? She's choosing Biden not because he has the best policies, because to her, policy doesn't really matter so much. Look, there's nobody in the world that wants progressive policy to be set in place more than I do. But this primary to me is not about policy. It's about beating Trump period. That's it. End of story. We need to nominate someone that is going to beat Trump. Um, and bring honesty and integrity and, and dignity and truth back to the United States of America. Empathy, compassion, all these things that I want to teach my, my children growing up in this great country. We need someone that's going to represent that to the best of their ability and, and, um, and fight Trump. And, and, you know, I can't, I, I, it's not about who's going to make the best president. It's a, really about who's going to beat this man, this horrible, horrible president. Now ask yourself this, why would someone like Alyssa Milano, who is seemingly intelligent, support someone, a political person, when they don't actually want clearly to lay out their policies? Well, think about it. 
she's comfortable. She has economic security. So regardless if Joe Biden or Donald Trump wins, she's going to be doing just fine. And this is why a lot of celebrities support these vacuous centrist politicians. George R.R. R. Martin also supports Joe Biden, claimed that his introduction video or his announcement video, if you will, was completely kick ass and he loved it. And ask yourself, why would someone like George R.R. R. Martin, who's clearly a genius, who's brilliant, who's extremely creative, would support someone as empty as Joe Biden? It's because he's comfortable. When you look at the net worth of these individuals, they are so comfortable that it doesn't matter to them what Joe Biden says he's going to do or what he's not going to do. They support him because he makes them feel good. Just hearing his voice really harkens back to the days of the Obama era when Democrats were in power. So the reason why these people don't care about policy and they don't care that Joe Biden is not talking about his ideas, they don't care that he literally said, quote, I don't have time to talk about health care, is because they're extremely comfortable. Now, if people actually looked past all of these analyses from celebrities and cable news pundits, they'd see that Joe Biden is nothing more than not just an empty suit, but a shill for the healthcare industry. Because when you look at reports from Vox, for example, it's clear that the healthcare industry is literally betting on Joe Biden to save their ass. They literally view him as a savior, basically the last choice or the last person who could save the country from Medicare for all. Juxtapose what we hear from the health insurance industry about Joe Biden and all the nice things that they have to say about him with what we hear when it comes to Bernie Sanders and how the healthcare industry responds to him. Well, we know that when he reintroduced his Medicare for all bill, Health industry stocks tanked. And on top of that, investors were shook. And insurance providers that offer Medicare Advantage plans felt compelled to increase benefits just to prove to Bernie Sanders, who they are terrified of, that they're not completely useless. And, you know, maybe they don't only care about profit. Maybe they're willing, under the right amount of pressure, to adapt and increase benefits. So that's how the health insurance industry responds to Bernie. Please don't kill us. But when it comes to Joe Biden, please save us. He's the savior. But yet, he can challenge Bernie to a debate on health care. And then the next week say, you know what? I don't have time to talk about policy. And he still gets support. It is unbelievable. Joe Biden is as vacuous as politicians nowadays can possibly be. And the only reason why this passes is because people still look to the Obama era with rose-colored glasses. They view it nostalgically. But I hope people will realize that Joe Biden lacks vision. He may seem like he's a tough guy. He may huff and puff. But in actuality, none of that means anything if he's not willing to be a tough guy and stand up to the special interests who he needs to stand up to. So, for example, listen to... What Bernie Sanders says about healthcare in an interview with ABC, he was asked about Medicare for all, and he described exactly what's wrong with Joe Biden's approach, because what Joe Biden wants is to maintain the status quo. Here's what Bernie Sanders says to that. Uh, Biden says that he would like to see a more incremental approach, fix Obamacare, provide a Medicare option for anybody, but allow people to still have some have private health insurance if they want. Why, why not do an approach like that? I'll tell you why. Because the system today is, is truly dysfunctional. Uh, we have 34 million people with no health insurance, even more who are underinsured. The drug companies are ripping us off every day, charging us the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. And yet, at the end of all of that, Jonathan, we are spending twice as much per capita on health care as do the people of any other country. That is a situation that really cannot be defended. You can't spend so much money and get so little value. Medicare right now is the most popular health insurance program in the country, but it only applies to people 65 years of age or older. All that I want to do is expand Medicare over a four-year period to cover every man, woman, and child in this country. It will save the average American a significant amount of money give them freedom of choice with regard to the doctor or hospital they want to go, and substantially lower the cost of prescription drugs. But to do that, you would eliminate private health insurance in this For country. basic needs, yes. So what, what do you say to the firefighter in Iowa who has a health plan that, that they like uh, and, and doesn't want to give up the health plan? What I would say is there are tens of millions of people every single year who change their health insurance programs. Mm -hmm. They may leave their job, their employer may give them a new uh, set of policies, new company. 
Uh, and what I would say is that if you want stability, if you want a better program, a more comprehensive program, with no deductibles, with no copayments, with no premiums, which will cost your family less, support Medicare for all. But 180 million or so people have, have private but health insurance. But every year, tens of, of them. But the only difference, and I look, we are taking on the insurance companies and we're taking on the drug companies. As you know, they formed an organization. They're going to spend tens and tens of millions of dollars trying to frighten the American people. The only difference that people will see in a Medicare for All as opposed to United Health. Now, the guy who runs United Health, I think, made $83 million in profits last year. Uh, not in profits, but in personal compensation. Right. He does not like Medicare for All. I can understand that. The guy who was head of Aetna put a deal together with CVS, a merger, made $500 million in the merger. He does not like Medicare for All. I got it. But for the average American, the only difference you will see is a change in your card. It will say Medicare rather than United Health or Blue Cross. So what you just heard there was someone with an actual vision who has a very specific plan to stop medical bankruptcies, to stop deaths in this country due to either a lack of health insurance or due to someone who has insurance, but they need a particular procedure that would save their lives, but their health insurance company doesn't want to pay for it. That's someone with a vision. That's someone who is not just educating people about what to expect with his policy, but educating them about the propaganda that is being disseminated at the behest of health insurance companies. He's explaining that, look, these companies have a financial interest in existing, obviously. So they're going to tell you everything. They're going to fear monger and make it seem as if Medicare for all isn't in your best interest. But let me tell you why this is in your best interest. So Bernie Sanders is able to respond to all of these objections because when you have a clear vision, you're able to hold that vision up to scrutiny. But Joe Biden, he doesn't have time to talk about healthcare, not because he doesn't have enough time. I think that it's obvious when you're running a presidential campaign, all you have is time to talk about policy. But he just doesn't want to talk about policy because in order to talk about his vision, he'd essentially have to defend the status quo, which he wants to do. But that's indefensible. When you have a system in this country, even post-Obamacare, where individuals, thousands of which are dying every single year, are going bankrupt, that is indefensible. But contrast that with Bernie Sanders, and he can defend his vision because he has a vision that actually works and he's not doing it because he wants to appease the health insurance industry and his donors. He's doing it because this is what he knows needs to happen in order to stop the healthcare crisis in this country. So listen to the way that he responds to objections to Medicare for all or some shortcomings potential shortcomings, hypothetical shortcomings that it may have. But there are some trade-offs, aren't there? I mean, are people going to be able to see the doctor? Can you guarantee, can you make that guarantee? Absolutely. Like Obama, and you'll be able to see, your, you'll, you'll be able to keep your doctor. Absolutely. Look, the truth is right now, you may have an insurance plan that the doctor you really like is not on that network. Mm -hmm. You cannot see the doctor you want, on, in many cases, under the current plan. Under Medicare for All, freedom of choice, with regard to any doctor, any hospital you want to go to. Well, what if everybody wants to see Dr. Sanders here in Des Moines? Uh, and there's more, more, more people. Well, than that's the same problem there, you have today. If you have a very popular. There's got to be trade-offs, though, right? But, I mean, but that's, look, if you have times. a really popular. Look, every other major country on earth, in one form or another, has a national health care plan. In every instance, they are far less expensive than is the case right now. So. If you have a popular doctor right now, under your current policy, it may take you a while to get in there. Uh, but under Medicare for All, freedom of choice with regard to doctors, with regard to hospitals, substantially lower prescription drug costs. We cannot defend, Jonathan. In fact, we cannot sustain a system in which the cost of health care continues to soar and we spend so much more than any other country. And by the way, our health care outcomes in terms of life expectancy in terms of dealing with many diseases, it's not particularly good compared to many other countries. So what he's doing here is incredible. He is educating people. And this is something that no other politician is really doing. He's saying, look, all of these potential objections that you're bringing up, these are issues that exist currently. Oh, you want to see a specific doctor or you need to see a specialist? Well, if that individual is not in your network, too bad. You can't under our current system. Oh, there's a really popular doctor and everyone having coverage will make that individual more difficult to see. That's still kind of, kind of an issue. I mean, me personally, 
I have a doctor that I was recommended by someone in my family that I have not been able to see because this individual has been booked since forever. So what he's doing is he's explaining that all of these points that are being made against Medicare for all, they're nothing but propaganda. It's bullshit. So this rivalry, going back to the beginning of the video that was initially referenced last week by the Washington Post, this is just a microcosm of a bigger issue because this isn't just about a debate between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden when it comes to health care. This is a fight for the heart and soul of the Democratic Party. You have one individual that makes people feel good, that wouldn't really do anything to change their lives, but celebrities and elites love him. But then you have another individual who is new, someone who is introducing things that are unfamiliar to us, but would actually fundamentally change our lives and take the party in a new direction, get them off of this pro-corporate trajectory. But yet, it's all about personality in politics nowadays. It's all about the person who has the correct persona, who's the right character to take on Donald Trump. Well, guess what? This isn't just about who can defeat Donald Trump. This is about who can change the country because that's what matters most when it comes to politics. Because I hate to tell all of these centrists this, but if you feel uncomfortable with the president Donald Trump now, imagine the offering we'll get from Republicans after another four to eight years of neoliberalism. We'll get someone far worse than Donald Trump, a President Louis Gohmert or a President Ted Nugent. Because as you can see, the Republican Party is becoming more and more cartoonishly evil because they have answers for people who are desperate due to neoliberalism. What neoliberalism does is it breeds radicalization because it strips people of their dignity economic security and they end up opting for someone who's a demagogue who's going to tell them whatever who will say it's it's the immigrants who are making your life miserable and they will be susceptible to that message so long as we keep getting democrats who aren't offering an alternative vision what we all know what's easy to see if you're a normal american the current traje trajectory that we're headed on is not even manageable we have climate catastrophe we have healthcare crisis in this country where every single year thousands of people die. And if we don't change course drastically, then things are going to get a lot worse. Americans know that. And they're willing to opt for anyone who is saying we're going to do things differently. Even if it's in the wrong direction, they just know that change is necessary. And they may not necessarily be able to grasp the intricacies of what's going on and what's happening. But if Democrats don't understand that, if they don't grasp what they need to do, the country and the party long term will be worse off. So when it comes to this rivalry between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, there's no competition. But what's sad is that Joe Biden can be arrogant and say, bring it on, Bernie. I'll debate you on health care, even if he has no policy proposals, even if he cannot compete with Bernie because he has the elites and the celebrities and the pundits to back him up. And it's sad. So obviously, if you truly want to be Donald Trump and more importantly, defeat fascism and white supremacy and Republican Party extremism, you've got to go for someone with a real vision. And there's one person in this race that truly not just has an alternative vision, but has a very specific plan as to how he's going to carry that out. It's Bernie Sanders.